Hey there folks and welcome back to Space Engineers Creative. So, here's what's gonna happen. As you know, they're going to be putting creative mode into the game, well, pretty soon or eventually. And, well, you know, building the same thing day after day is kinda boring and I'm pretty sure it's boring to watch. So, what we're going to do is whenever they put in creative mode, we're going to go off on a little adventure, more or less a big adventure, and we're gonna have some serious fun. And I was thinking about bringing the Herpter Prize with us as our capital ship, but then I was thinking, you know what, this is a really big ship and it's re gonna require a lot of resources to maintain and all that type of stuff. So I don't think this is gonna be our ship we're gonna be using for exploration. However, we are going to finish this ship so that we can use it for whatever pur purposes we want. But uh, as you see, since last episode, I've been busy working on it. And this thing's, these, these things take forever to build, unfortunately. I did finish building the gun battery. I also um, put some engines on the back uh, to kind of... I mean, this isn't the final design, but it looks a little bit better than a, just a square at the back. I also finished putting windows in our, um, in our bridge area. Kind of odd looking, but there's no real way to get those slopes to work properly, at least not that I can find. Um, oh, I did forget to finish this right here. Oh well, that's not a big deal. But, um, so the Herpter Prize is looking pretty good. Also, as you probably noticed, a couple episodes back I was trying to figure out how on earth I was going to get a door to cover this entire thing, but then I realized none of my ships are going to be that big, and having a door that opens that big just makes it easier for enemies to get in. So what I'm going to have is a small door on each side that will be able to open and close via um, pistons. So we're going to probably build that this episode. Might not be able to f uh, finish it completely, but we will at least uh, block it out. So it's going to be one door on this side, one door on that side. Not sure if we're going to need two doors or if it can, or two pistons, one on one side, one on the other, or if it can just be one piston. In fact, I bet if I put the piston up there, it would be able to push down or something like that. It'd probably work better than going from side to side. Is to have the doors go um, from top to bottom. Anyhow, we're going to work on that. But before we do that, we're going to show you the finished gun battery. Now let's uh, see if we can find our way in. And as you see, I did have to switch around the gravity. I didn't want the gravity pushing against this because then we would have conflicting gravity fields. So let's uh, turn off our jetpack. There we go. There is a lot of antennas everywhere, so I'm going to turn that off. So here we go. This is pretty much all it is. It's just a corridor with a bunch of doors that lead out to the different firing stations. And you can reach them, so you can... Eh, well, you can sort of reach them to put in ammunition. Eh, well, <laughs> sometimes you can if the guns are rotated properly. Um, why did I put that there? Oh, whatever. Anywho. Ouch. Let us uh, continue on. This is essentially all it is. And then it makes its way over here. And it goes into the engineering section. And over here, we have these guns that are facing the rear. Alright. Ow. And there's the engineering section. And, hmm. I could have swore that was connected at one point in time. I must be getting some bugs in the game. Maybe that's why the door was misplaced, too. I know those were connected. I see shenanigans happening. Anyhow, um, I'm going to show you something else that I've been working on. Ooh, let's uh, turn that off. Because, you know, we said that we wanted to go exploring once the exploration feature is in the game, and the Herpter Prize is just too big of a ship to take with us. So... What I have done is I have created a smaller ship that's going to do everything that we need it to do and is fairly uh, frugal when it comes to sucking down the uranium. Also, it has everything that we need. It has a small little bay for uh, robotic craft that we can use for mining, repairing, and uh, exploration of 
ships and fighter craft and stuff like that. So, oh, where did I put it? I'm gonna turn my... I've been working on this for quite a while, but, well, ever since they actually re uh, released the information about the exploration update, I've been working on this, but uh, I can't remember where I hit it. It's behind one of these asteroids. I turn the... I turn the antennas on, so I should be able to find it. Is it that one? I don't think it's hiding behind this asteroid. It's hiding behind one of these asteroids. And it has two antennas on it. Is it this one? It's probably this one over here. I still have to create the robotic craft, and I still have to get the um, remote controls and stuff ready. But it's coming along nicely. Yep, this is it. The ship is coming along nicely. And I'll show you the front. The front is over here. And it... Yeah, there you go. It has a little bit of defense. It's not meant to be an attack craft, so it's uh, not going to be too heavily armed. However, it does have a little ram on the front because, well, I'm terrible at driving, so it needs a little bit of a... A little bit of a crumple zone, I guess you could call it. Um, yeah, so here we have some engine pods on the side. The main thrust in the back. I could probably add more thrust to it, but I haven't done that. And this particular, um, what is it, connector... I believe this one goes to... Yes, this is meant for our refining stations, which is inside. So we're going to have a mining drone that we're going to be using inside of this ship. Because when we're off exploring, we're not going to be able to take all the uranium we need with us. Or if we take damage, we probably will need to mine some more materials so that we can repair our stuff. So um, a mining drone is going to be flying around, mining stuff, and then it will attach here and it will automatically transfer the goods into a cargo container which will transfer them into our refineries which are inside which we will show you the ship is not finished in the inside but it's uh it's getting there i still have to put in lights and stuff like that as well as a couple finishing touches but it is certainly coming along nicely and speaking of which i have some uranium in here and this is the uh little connector for uh filling up our nuclear reactors so let us throw some uranium in here and it will automatically be transferred to our large reactors which there's uh, not too much in them so let's let's even out the amount I believe two should make it a li little bit more even uh, uh, good enough alright so that's that let's actually take you on a tour of the ship as we have it so far um, you may think that these little fins are just decoration, but, uh, they actually serve a purpose. There, if we're taking fire from the sides, it will protect our guns and little connectors from getting shot. A as well as these fins are meant to protect the antennas. And, uh, okay, those fins are pretty much for decoration. But if you're at certain angles, it can protect the, um, cockpit of the ship. And over here we have the door to the little tiny hangar bay, but the hangar is not going to be that big. It's just going to be big enough for a couple of drone ships. The ma I think we're going to have one drone ship for mining, one drone ship for um, exploring, and one drone ship for uh, attacking. Maybe we'll have a welder drone ship. We'll see if we need it. And this is the, there's, you can get into the ship that way. The only other way to get into the ship right now is right here. Also, I suppose I should show you the underside. More fins to protect this gun. And these are mostly for shooting down incoming missiles. Not necessarily for attack. More fins over there to protect the uh, missile turrets in the back. The one thing that I unfortunately couldn't do with this ship is the... Turrets are not fed automatically, so that's one thing we'll have to take note of, is we'll have to feed the turrets automatically after we get into a little battle, if we ever do. Hopefully we don't, because it takes forever to build this stuff. And we go inside here, turn off our jetpack. 
close the door. We have a little interior turret to prevent boarders. I don't know if the uh, AI is going to want to board your ships, but I know they're going to put AI into the game eventually, so that's there as a precaution. That's the little airlock. Here's another airlock. And now you're in the interior of the ship. Right now there are no lights, so I have to have my light on. This is just a cargo container storage room. And uh, there's your medical bay. We're going to have to have a lot of uh, storage for all sorts of various parts because we're going to want to take a lot of stuff on the voyage with us. And there is the area to the bridge. In fact, we'll show you the bridge first. It's a little bit cramped up here, but we have to do what we can do. Fantastic visibility, though. And here we have our flight seat. And ship moves are, uh, around pretty nicely. It's not... It's actually almost the exact same maneuverability as the Herpter Prize, despite the fact it's way smaller, but we also want it to be fuel efficient. So that's the flight seat for controlling the ship. This, you, I suppose you can use it to control the ship, but it's going to be meant to fly the drones that are in our hangar bay, which is right here, which we don't have our drones yet. We're going to have to build them, or I suppose we can use uh, some of the drones that we've already built. So you know what? That's probably a better idea, is just use drones we've already built, um, which will park inside the hangar bay, which is in there. And we have some windows overlooking the hangar bay, so you can see what's going on in there. And yeah. So this is the hangar bay, or not the hangar bay, but the uh, bridge of the ship. Also, there's an interior turret, just in case. And, oop, mining hauler down there. And let's uh, take a walk down. So this is the door to the hangar bay. The hangar door. In fact, we can go here. We will go to... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Where is our piston? Piston? Uh, I'm going to find it, because I'm going to open the hangar door. Hmm. I wonder why it's not showing up. Oh, that's it. Herp -derp -derp. I already renamed it. So, the door will open. And you can fly in your ship. This side does not have a hangar door, only this side. I just wanted to save on parts because making this hangar door, oh man, they are expensive on the steel plates. So there's that. Also, we can close the hangar door now. Forgot that I renamed it. Where are you, hangar door? We will reverse you. And it will close then. And we're going to have uh, this set up so you can do this via remote control if we want, so that'll be nice. We also have to get, um, what is it? One thing that is not in the ship that we need right now is a remote control block so we can uh, control the drones or so we can control the ship. I'd also like this ship to be able to be controlled uh, remotely. So say I'm exploring a station that I find and my ship is a ways away because I don't want to expose it to its gunfire and I disable the gunfire and I want to bring the ship closer, I can do it via remote control instead. And here is the engineering section. This is where the hangar door mechanism is hidden. We have our gravity generator, we have some cargo containers, and then we have the main control panel for the engineering section. We have a whole bunch of gyroscopes stuck on the wall over there as well as over there and over there. And this is the main area. So over here, you see up there we have a connector. It goes down to a cargo container which brings the uh, ores, which we will only put ores and stuff inside this cargo container. It will bring it to the refineries where they will get refined. And it's the same on both sides. And then they will bring them to the conveyor, which will either distribute them to the arc furnace if they are of the correct material. I believe only iron and nickel can be used in the blast furnace. And then the other stuff will be uh, brought to the, re to the assembler. The finished goods will be brought to the assembler, which 
where we can make stuff with them. There's one on that side, and there is one on this side. And here are our nuclear reactors. And that's where the conveyor or the connector was. And it, there's a conveyor there. It brings them. Actually, that's a cargo container up here. So the connector brings it to a cargo container, which will then bring it to the conveyor, which will distribute it, hopefully evenly, to the two nuclear reactors right there. Also, if we have uranium on us, say we take it out of the uh, refinery, we can actually just put it in the cargo container here, and then it will distribute them automatically that way. So, there's a lot of progress being made on the ship. However, there are some things I would like to do, such as adding lighting. We need to put the remote controls in. We probably should add some cameras and sensors and those sort of things. Also, we need to finish the drones. So, that is this ship so far. Oh, also, interior uh, turrets to protect the uh, drone bay. So that's what I've been working on recently, also working on finishing the Herpter Prize, but that's going to take a while. So, that will be that. You know what, I think this episode unfortunately has gone on for a little bit too long and I have some stuff I need to do. So um, I think that'll be it for this episode. Next episode we're going to uh, finish the doors on the Herpter Prize and maybe finish some work on this ship which has been unnamed so feel free to give us some names for this little exploration doohickey of a ship thank you folks for watching that'll be it for this episode see you folks next time